The world of eyewear can be a mysterious place. And we all have questions when it comes to our glasses. And that's why I set up this YouTube channel, to answer as many of them as possible for you. But in today's video, I'm going to be specifically addressing some of the queries that you guys have sent over to me and reached out to me to answer. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what you've got for me. So hi, I'm Robert, Style and Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And I truly believe that your perfect glasses will come when you are empowered and educated on how to choose the right ones. And I love to help as well, of course. So in today's video, yeah, I'm gonna be answering some of the questions that you guys have asked me. And definitely stay until the end because I'm also going to be unboxing and showcasing a very special pair of glasses, one of only a thousand in the world. But before we begin, I will tell you a little bit about the frames that I'm wearing today, especially because it's the first time you'll have seen me wearing them. And I know you guys always like to ask me in the comments. These are a Luca de Stael pet from Paris. Luca de Stael are an artisanal company hand making every single pair of glasses in their small workshop in Paris. And no other company in the world are making glasses from natural materials like leather and stone, at least not the whole glasses. These are beautiful to wear. I'm loving how they feel. The leather is nice and soft on my skin. I've wanted Luca de Stael frames forever. I finally got a pair. These are in olive green with a whiskey leather on the inside for that contrast. And I've paired that with a brown 12% tint and a jade flash coating. I didn't really feel like they needed a lot of tint. It's just a little something just to make them that extra little bit special. With that out of the way, let's get answering some of your questions. So we'll start with John, who has asked, you do such a great job. Honestly, it's difficult to ask. Well, what can I say? Is there a way with the eye profiler and other eye scanning equipment where if you scan someone, you'll be able to tell with that frame the precise fit of glasses? Well, the answer is definitely yes. So through this YouTube channel, I have connected with clients literally all over the world in more than 30 countries now. And we style, a lot of people remotely through video consultations or even just through email. And we have a pretty robust system for doing that and making sure the glasses fit really well when you get them. However, it's not as good, it's never as good as if you are able to visit us in store. Because we have the eye profiler, because we have the VisuFit 1000. The VisuFit 1000 in particular takes a 3D scan of your face and creates a 3D model of your head. And with that, we can very, very accurately choose the right fit of frames. In fact, it even comes with something called virtual try-on, where you can literally see how the glasses look on your face from any angle, zoomed in and zoomed out. And that is really cool. So for clients who are local to us, they come in the store, we do that with each customer. For clients who are within the UK, but it's a long way to come, the great news is that you can come and visit and be measured once on the Vision Fit, and then everything else from there can be done remotely. So. What we usually do is they might travel say two or three hours to visit us. They come in, they have the scan done, and from that, we can then remotely select glasses with them in the future. Now, that's not strictly necessary because like I said, we can do that without you ever visiting the store. We can make sure that your glasses fit well. But the VisuFit 1000 is an extra tool to really help us get that perfect. So yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, we can use our technology to do that and make sure that everything fits perfectly for the client. Next question is another one from John, a different John. Don't worry, it's not just the same John asking different questions. Okay, here are some questions, and it's all to do with sports vision. So very focused during sports activities and your comments. Okay, good question, because very focals can work for sports under the right conditions. And very focals are actually often very problematic for sports people. What lens manufacturers usually do is they'll take an off-the-shelf design and they'll make that design of lens in your prescription. And it's really hit and miss whether that design will work for you. We have a different process here where we'll choose the right lens design for you from a huge amount of different options from different lens manufacturers. And that generally results in you having better vision. That's the aim after all. But when it comes to sport, it's even more important because let's take golf, for example. If you're a golfer and you're wearing very focals, the problem that you'll have is that when you look down, that's set for close-up reading through this, this part of the lens. But when you look down as a golfer, you're actually trying to address the ball by your feet as you're about to swing at it. And the problem is that those two don't work because 
you're looking through a part of the lens that's set for here, and you're trying to look probably two, three times further than that focal distance. What that means is, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you have to adjust your head to look through a different zone. That affects your shoulders, which in turn affects your swing. That's just one example, but there are parallels in both tennis, baseball, running, cycling, all different sporting activities, because the posture that we're in during sport is always different than natural, ordinary life. So, very focus can work as long as they are tailor-made to your sporting activity. It's something that I've actually specialized in for a while. It's one of the most exciting things that I do, in fact, because I know that someone might look forward all week to that one day of golf that they might play or that one day of tennis or that one run that they go on weekly. And if I can enhance that for them and make their enjoyment of it even greater with the perfect pair of glasses, I find that incredibly rewarding. I feel like I've contributed to their enjoyment of life. And the right sports glasses with the right lens design, whether that's very focals or whatever you need, is a huge part of your enjoyment because guess what? If you can't see things perfectly, you're not going to enjoy it to the fullest extent. So great question, John, and I enjoyed answering that one. The next question comes from Akahina. You must have customers that come in with vintage frames. In fact, I just had some new lenses put into gold vintage oval Windsor glasses with a saddle bridge and plain cable temples. Those are the ones that hook all over the back of the ear. They were my great grandfathers pre-World War I and in remarkably perfect shape. I know it's not your business model, but I bet you have stories. Actually, it is our business model. We're happy to work on your glasses, whether they're new or old. And a lot of clients come to us with frames that they already have and ask us to refurbish them with their new prescription. And I take a lot of enjoyment in that as well. In fact, it's incredibly humbling to work on something that's 50, 100 years old. You just think of the history of that pair of glasses, you know, what it's been through, the moments in time that it's lived through. And it reminds me, this question actually really reminds me of a client I sadly used to have because he passed away, Mr. Campbell who was, he lived about an hour away from us. So I was very grateful when he came to visit. This is way before we were as famous as we are now through the YouTube channel. And in the shop, we called him very affectionately Father Christmas because he did, I promise you, look exactly like Father Christmas. Huge white beard, round pink face, round glasses. He was the epitome of Santa Claus, trust me. And he would always come in and order really nice glasses. And one day he, he came in and ordered a beautiful pair of glasses. He always paid cash as well, a huge wad of cash. And with the cash, he gave me a glasses case. And I was intrigued. I opened it up and he, he said it was a gift for me. And I mean, what a gift because it was his father's glasses, gold rimmed. And in those days they were gold plated. Exactly as Akihina just described, very small round frames with cable temples that looped around the ears and a saddle bridge without any nose pads. And I mean, Mr. Campbell at that time was around about 80 years old, and bear in mind this is going on five years, maybe more. So his father, I mean, we must be talking 100 years or more. Mrs. Campbell's wife is still with us, by the way. She's still a customer. I love seeing her and Mr. Campbell, top guy. So yeah, we're happy to work on all glasses that you might have. In fact, it's a privilege and we find it very exciting. So that would be our only caveat when we work on your own glasses. Next question is from Miho. Miho, lovely person from New Zealand. She ordered a pair of Reykjavik eyes glasses and Bottega Veneta glasses earlier in the year. I hope, Miho, that you're super happy with them. I believe you are. Your question is, which color lens will you choose for an orange frame? Great question, because orange is probably one of the most difficult colors of frame to match a lens tint to. And I tell you what I wouldn't do, I would not go with an orange lens to match an orange. In a couple of orange frames that I've sold recently, the client's gone for photochromic lenses which go from light to dark. And there are a couple of combinations you can go with on that. Um, one client went for brown with ruby, which was beautiful actually, that all tied in in a similar color scheme without too much orange, like I said, or just plain photofusion gray. And orange frames do tend to look fantastic in sunlight because Again, the brightness of the sun really brings out the color. So that's something I definitely consider photochromic lenses in your orange glasses. Next question is from James, a longtime subscriber. Hi, James. What are some eyeglasses brands that are made in the United Kingdom that you recommend, such as Walter and Herbert? 
Great question. Well, I do recommend Walter and Herbert, of course. I think for the mid-range price point that they are, they're very hard to beat. There's very few acetate frames out there that are as good as Walter and Herbert at that price, which is roughly about £250, $300, that kind of thing. For that price, you can't go wrong with Walter and Herbert, but there are other great British eyewear brands as well. Anglo-American is another one that we stock. The 406 is a beautiful round eye that is super classic, super versatile because it comes in like four different sizes, like 10 different colors, and comes with that vintage style sun clip. They're less expensive than Walter and Herbert, so they're very affordable too. On the other end of the spectrum, you have brands like Savile Row who are pretty high end. They made the typical quintessential Harry Potter glasses, like literally they made the glasses for the Harry Potter movie. Savile Row are great, great quality, but I don't think they're made in England. Cutler & Gross are another great British brand, and Tom Davis, both exceptional quality, but again, not actually made here in the UK, they're just British design. And then you have Linda Farrow, which is probably my favorite British eyewear brand. Amazing quality, and I'd love to be a stockist in the near future. Though they make some incredibly stunning metal frames with gold plating. Beautiful, beautiful quality. Very expensive, but worth every penny. Those are the British brands that are kind of on my radar at the moment. And we stock the only two that I'm aware of that are actually made here in the UK, Anglo-American Optical and Walter and & Herbert. And I would definitely recommend both brands. And while I'm on the subject, it's great to see products being made here in the UK because I don't know if you guys know, we lost a lot of manufacturing over the years and very few products are actually made here. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of global eyewear, you know, brands from France and Italy and Spain and Japan and everywhere. It's cool that we have some great frame brands made here as well. Next question from RD93. How do I get a light green mint tint? What do I ask for? Good question, but a hard one to answer. There is no standardization of tinting in the industry. So what Hoyer or Essilor or Zeiss will describe one tint as, the other company might describe it completely differently. What I would recommend is to find an optician that you trust and is passionate about tints and work with them. Send them a photo of what you have in mind and they should be able to work from there. If they're passionate and if they're excited about doing it, then they'll take the time to really scrutinize the tint color and also take the time to match the tint color because it is not easy, it's done by eye. There are reasons for that because every single set of lenses is gonna be slightly different in thickness, in material that it's made from, lots of different factors. When you say light green mint to me, I think of the chill out green tint from Zeiss and I think that might be a good option. But by all means, drop me an email, send me the picture of the tint that you have in mind and maybe we can make it for you. So a couple of questions from Robert, another amazing client who has ordered more glasses than you would believe this year. And Robert, I'm very, very, very grateful for that. We've built an amazing eyewear wardrobe for you together. So I'll definitely answer two of your questions, that's not a problem. First one, what are your eco-credentials? What are you doing to be more eco-friendly and can you demonstrate it? Oh, good question, can we demonstrate it? Are you choosing frames that are more eco-friendly and can you measure carbon footprint in a frame? I'm not aware of any eyewear brand that is disclosing its carbon footprint and I think that's a really good idea actually. But in terms of our eco-credentials, we built this store from scratch. We built the building as literally just four walls and a roof. It had no plumbing and electric. We literally built this store and we built it from the ground up to be eco-friendly. So for example, we have underfloor heating rather than radiators because they're a lot more efficient. We have full LED lighting everywhere, which obviously again is very energy efficient. We have huge solar panels on the roof. We have an EV charger in the car park for clients who are visiting from further afield and want to charge their car while they're having their eye test. And that's completely free for all of our clients to use and for all of our staff to use as well. Not only that, but we partner with, for example, Zeiss, who are taking massive strides, really huge strides in the industry to reduce their wastage in lens production, as well as offering brands like Luca Distel, for example, that are made from natural materials rather than plastics, or eco eyewear, which are made from plant-based materials, recycled metal. I'm super passionate about preserving this planet. I mean, it goes without saying that it's important, but genuinely, it's incredibly important to me. How do you choose frames for the store? How do you decide between independent eyewear brands and designer brands? What is your level of support for independent brands? 
and what are your best selling brands? Okay, I take a huge amount of responsibility when I style a client with a pair of glasses. I think it is so important because it affects how everybody else sees them and it affects how they see the world. So I hope you understand how much this means when I say that it is harder to buy frames than to sell frames. Choosing frames for the shop is one of the most difficult tasks because there are so many brands out there and so many things to consider. So when I'm choosing glasses, I'm not just looking at obvious things like the quality, the durability, the comfort and the style. I'm also looking at things like the support that we're going to get from that company. If things go wrong, if we have a problem, are we going to be able to rely on that company to help us solve the problem? Because ultimately that reflects on us. If you get a pair of glasses from me, I want to make sure that if you have an issue with that pair of glasses, that we can really back you up. And if it's a company that's not going to provide parts six months down the line, a year down the line, or if they're not going to want to know when there's a problem, that really affects our ability to help you sometimes. So things like that are really important, the reputation of the company. We're also thinking about things like how unique are they? Because there's not really a point in us selling a brand that you can get anywhere else. I like things that are different anyway. I like things that are outside the box, that are innovative and new and unique and special and not just run of the mill glasses. A very big conundrum is between the best quality, to be fair, eyewear brands, the independent eyewear brands and the most well-known brands. For example, if, if you sell Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci, Tom Ford, brands like that, that is such an easier way to make a living than selling Luca de Stael, for example, or Geoffrey or Reykjavik Eyes, because those brands do not sell themselves. Most people, 99% of the world, have no idea what those brands are. And it's up to you to educate them on why they are so much better, why they are amazing, and why that client should buy them. And not everyone is receptive to that. Some people purely buy based on name. They assume because Ray-Ban is something that everybody has, they must be good. And Gucci, well, we know Gucci, they're stylish. They must be really cool glasses. Or Tom Ford, wow, they've got that T on the front. And how cool is that? When you compare those brands on this side of thing, the designer brands, to the independent eyewear brands, it is literally no contest. The independent eyewear brands, not all of them, but certainly the ones that we focus on, are infinitely better than the more well-known brands. So when you say, how do you choose? You do have to have a bit of a mixture. So, so we do have Gucci, for example, and Hugo Boss and Longchamp and brands like that, that and Chloe, and Jimmy Choo. We do have brands like that that are recognizable because people visiting the store often will want those recognizable brands and it makes them feel more confident in what we do. But when someone actually asks us, what do we recommend? It's rare that I would recommend one of those brands. I would usually recommend Reykjavik Eyes, Jeffrey, Eco, Gast, LA Eyeworks, Luca de Stael, Barton Pereira, those true independent and luxury eyewear brands that make beautiful glasses. And I hope that answers your question. There's a lot of thought that goes into choosing brands for the store and a lot of time and effort as well. One policy we have that is unlike most opticians in the world, we don't just wait for reps or agents from the brands to come to us and offer their products. I literally travel the world. Milan, Paris, Munich, Copenhagen, America, Asia, in search of the best glasses in the world. So when I say that I believe that a pair of glasses is the best pair of glasses in the world, I truly mean that. Not just because we sell it, because I've seen pretty much everything that is out there and that is my opinion and that's why we sell that product. I'm so passionate about offering the best to my customers. I think glasses are so important and choosing the right frames for the shop enables me to then choose the right glasses for my clients. Great questions, Robert. I enjoyed answering those. My voice is starting to go, probably been talking a bit too much. So I think that's enough questions for today. I hope you found that really interesting. As promised, to close out the video, let's unbox these very special Kazal frames. We have this little certificate here that says legendary, natural, limited horn edition of the model 607. And on the back of the card, there's a little bit of literature. I'll read it for you now. The model 607 has long been a beloved classic. With this limited edition run of 1,000 units made in Buffalo Horn, we have reinvented this legend once again. To do this, we work hand in hand with nature. We do this because it is our nature to want the best and because nature still produces the most beautiful designs. Isn't that true? 
Each and every horn we use has its own beauty. No two are alike in hue and grain. This is the stuff of legends and makes each piece truly unique, just like the people who wear them. And it's individually inscribed 0021, I think that's 21 of 1000. So yeah, this is the famous 607, an icon in eyewear and an icon in the music industry. One of the Kazal legends frames. Now it's important to know that Kazal are a German brand who actually don't make the glasses nowadays in Germany, but the legends frames are still made in Germany. So those are the ones you want to go for. The quality is superb on them. This is the actual case itself, a typical legends case to be fair. This is the inside of that presentation box. It looks absolutely lovely with a little slot for the buffalo horn care cream, which is really important to moisturize the frame. There's a little leaflet about the 607. I'll leave that as a surprise for the person who buys these and a cleaning cloth inside its own little packet. But without further ado, let's open up these limited edition 607s. And these are them. Now the buffalo horn on this frame or the buffalo horn that this frame is made from is not as patterned as the buffalo horn that you might see on, for example, Cartier glasses. And then perhaps the different pieces of the 1000 that have been made will all have more or less patination. But this one is basically sleek black, which in a way is true to the original design because the 607 was always black and gold. The buffalo horn feels quite firm against the skin because buffalo horn is a very rigid material and at the same time, very smooth. And that's why a lot of people love the texture of buffalo horn because it just glides on to the face. It has a really nice premium feeling as you wear it. The horn is polished absolutely beautifully. It's a very glossy finish on the frame, definitely more glossy than you could achieve with acetate with the gold plated accents at the temples as well. And those gold plated accents are 24 karat gold, by the way. They've tied that in with an amber flash coating on the lens on top of a brown tint, which, I mean, brown is probably my favorite tint color to choose for a sunglass but the amber makes it super premium and the conventional models of the 607 in acetate they don't have that amber flash coating so it's a really nice finishing touch to them if you don't know who kazal are they are truly one of the most inspirational and legendary eyewear brands ever in the 70s and 80s carrie zaloni whose name was shortened to kazal was a designer for dior before moving on to start his own eyewear brand kazal and Kazal instantly became iconic, instantly recognizable from the music industry. They permeated that music scene. And they're pretty much solely responsible for that transition from glasses being seen as a negative to now being seen as a positive. They were the first glasses that were worn and these can be worn as glasses. Let's remove those gold lenses. They were the first glasses to be worn as a fashion accessory. Many, many hip hop artists weren't wearing these with prescription, they were just wearing them to be cool. And that philosophy of embracing eyewear is the reason why we are where we are today with so many eyewear brands that make wearing glasses into a real positive thing. They're an accessory nowadays and Kazal were the first accessories in eyewear. So as soon as they announced the 607 in Buffalo Horn, of course I put in my order. Apparently not quickly enough because this is only number 21. It would have been awesome to have number one, but 21 is still a pretty low number. And I'm really glad that we did get this pair because it's almost pure black in keeping with the original design. These retail for roughly 2000 pounds. That's around about $2,200, but they are certainly worth it as a collector's item, as a piece of history and as a cool piece of eyewear. Cause they'll have their own iconic styling that nobody else does. If you like bow glasses, as much as I'm a fan of brands like Barton Pereira and especially Robert LaRoche who do awesome bold frames, Kazal are the original and in my opinion, still the best. So that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed the brief showcase of these Kazal amazing limited edition frames and the questions that I answered for you today. If you have your own questions, leave them in the comment section below. I love answering your questions. Genuinely, I do. This is why I do what I do, to empower you to find your perfect pair of glasses. And if you did enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, subscribe and give us a like, of course. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.